<laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not childish. Um, but the, the, the day before we got married, it's a memory that I will always have. We forgot to bring food. Mm. And we only had a castle light and two rolls. So we sat in the car and we ate a roll each and a castle light. John, what was your favorite part of your wedding? Uh, before, after the ideas. <laughs> um, before? Before the ideas. Before. Um, you must answer correctly. Seeing Jordan walk down the aisle, watching the corner. Jordan, mm. what advice would you give to yourself or to your younger self about getting married at 21? Um, it would have, well, it would have been to just, I would have said to myself if I could go back to just relax and continue to just trust that God would bring our wedding together because financially we, would, we could have never afforded the wedding that we had, um, but God is super gracious and I would have just reminded myself to actually enjoy the three month planning process that we had. Yeah. Jean, I mean, I enjoyed the wedding planning process. <laughs> I'm sure nothing. you did a lot, right? <laughs> I'm sure you did a it lot. It wasn't PE all the time, but it was really cool. And also, I think, like, um, individually to, to be okay to do your own thing. Um, Jordan likes to read and likes to, to hang out, and she gets full that way. Mm -hmm. And I like to go and adventure and go and fish and climb a mountain and skateboard and just yeah. be absolutely wild, and that fuels me. Yeah. Um, so individually, stuff like that for us works really, really well. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, like I said, keeping God at the center, praying together, doing devotions together, yeah. praying for each other and situations that we're going through. I think, yeah, that's really helpful. It's great, it's great. Okay. What would you say makes your marriage work? What is your success recipe? Um, oh, she's, I mean, I'm only three, we're only three years in, so I don't know if I have the success recipe, but I think it's to actually just always remember that you were friends first and that you're always gonna be best friends. Um, and to just have wholehearted trust in your yeah. partner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and to just, I think, just always have fun because otherwise it just becomes a you striving to have this yeah. marriage that's great and to be like really open and honest about who you are as a person so I can totally be myself around Jordan yeah. and I must <laughs> totally myself around Jordan shame. like yeah it is shame oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fun great wild okay Jean last question yes um, when do you know that it's the one, or well, not it, he or she? When do you know he or she is the one? And how did you know that Jordan was the one? Um, it was, it's, a, it's a good question. It's weird because I don't know. Like you get, I guess you get some kind of like feeling in your soul. I guess. Um, I don't know. I just knew that if I asked her out, that that was going to be the last time I asked someone out. Um, it was a weird. It was so like, it was like a decision you made. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I don't know. It's like. I, don't know. <laughs> I just said, can we, can we do this thing? And she said, Good yes. Good morning, like, Father's House Church. <laughs> it's great. So, welcome it's to great. the 1030 service. It's so great <laughs> to you. see you. Um, that was John and Jordan, our Utena campus pastors. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your journey with us. Can we rise to the worship church?
promises are found in Christ. Amen. So my trust is the key to the safe of God's promises. And my rest is the key to God's promises. So we'll rest secure knowing full well that he who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. Amen. That every single thing that he has put in you and put in me and put in us, he will lead us on from glory to glory. And therefore we can rest because he who promised is faithful. and character and your love towards us doesn't change father and so we thank you that you are the same yesterday today and forever and that we can trust you with our lives father and so we ask this and we declare that you are a great great father indeed in jesus name amen amen welcome to church before you take your seats we just want to celebrate our young guns as they head off to their service. So if you're in grade six, seven, and eight, you'll see those lit up lollipop boards at the back. You can follow them to your service with Jordan, your young guns pastor. So as you grab your seats, why don't you just greet the person next to you and um, say hello. So happy you're here today. Even though you wake up, wake up late today, you're still here. So I'm Sharice and I'm on team here at Father's House and we're so glad to have you join us this morning. If you are a first time visitor, we have a lounge at entrance three. There you can meet some of our team. Also you can ask any questions you might have and you get a complimentary coffee. So that's always a win. It is week one of our starting point. Um, and what that means is you get to join in on a tour of church of the building and getting to know a little bit of history behind it. So if you're gonna join that starting point week one, you can all gather at entrance one 
and they'll guide will meet you there and then walk you through the process. Also, you would have seen on your seats these really cool cards. They're not just pretty, they're informational. So take them home. They have information about our Easter service times on there. Put them up on your fridge so that you're aware of them and that you can extend the invitation to family and friends. So I just want to invite Mark up, who's going to share with us on giving this morning. If you can just join me in welcoming him. Uh, thank you, Cherise. Good morning, church. My name is Michael Collier, and I'm on team here at Father's House. Um, if you are new to this faith journey or if you're visiting us, you can relax at this stage of the service. We really don't want anything from you. Um, in fact, church is the only club in the world designed for non-members. So everything we do here is for you. But for those of us on the faith journey for a while, we consider giving to be a continuation of our worship. Um, and when considering what I was going to say this morning, I thought I'd continue on the theme of our relationship series that George has been leading us in uh, and speak about our relationship towards money. So in, in Matthew 6, verse 21, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus goes on to say, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This tells me that the primary issue for Jesus is not money in and of itself. It's the ownership of our hearts. Do we have money or does money have us? Do we own it or does it own us? Do we possess it or does it possess us? The issue with money is not money, but ownership of our hearts. I love Jesus' teaching that follows the scripture of not being able to serve both God and money. He goes straight on to say, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans worry about these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What I believe the scripture is asking really has nothing to do with money or our relationship there too. It has everything to do with our relationship with God. Jesus is actually asking us, do we trust God? Do you believe that your heavenly Father knows what you need and will deliver those needs? He's asking a question of our hearts. Do we trust God? My answer, need look no further than the cross. For God has given us everything we could ever need in His Son, Jesus Christ. And my response is, Lord, thank you. I trust you with everything. I hope that encouraged you as much as it did, as it did me. Church news to follow on the screens and the ushers will receive the giving. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello and welcome to Father's House Church North End. If you're visiting for the first time, we hope you feel welcomed and at home and will take a few moments after the service to introduce yourself to us in the welcome lounge at entrance three. Vouchers for the coffee shop are available for all our guests and any information you may need to make the most of your church experience. Here's this week's news. We are so excited to announce that as part of our status update series, we'll be running some grow courses at Father's House Church over the month of March. Please take note of these key dates. Our marriage enrichment course headed up by Pastor Dave Ganetsky will run over four sessions beginning on March 7th. Pastor Dave has over 35 years of pastoral and marriage counseling experience. For any questions or more information, please head on over to the information counters at entrance one or three or email hello at fathershousesa.org. Pastor Dave will also be available to the church for counseling and pastoral chats on Tuesday afternoons. Please email dave at fathershousesa.org to set up an appointment. This is for anyone who would like advice or prayer for anything you would like our church to be involved with. We have amazing facilities for parents with children under the age of three. Two of these facilities include the parents' lounge for parents with babies up to 12 months, while the toddler's lounge is for parents who'd prefer to stay with their toddlers from 12 to 36 months. These two rooms allow parents to watch the service via live stream while their little ones are comfortable in a more suitable environment. We are looking for volunteers with the passion for parents with children of this age to serve in these two spaces on Sunday mornings. Volunteer duties include overseeing the lounge, assisting with the offering, and being available for direction should the parents or children need anything during the service. If you'd like to sign up or get more information, please contact Alzan at fathershousesa.org. Calling the Big Five. All volunteers, all dream teamers from all sites, PE, Utenake, and JB. Our next Dream 19 team night is happening on Wednesday the 6th of March right here at Father's House North End. 
This is going to be an incredible night of worship, community building, fun, dreaming and planning for ECHA Conference, Easter and our next step for JBay launch. Here's a message from our Women's Ministry Pastor Amal regarding the first Flourish event for the year. Our first Flourish of the year takes place on Thursday the 14th of March and it's open to all women. We've been working hard behind the scenes for weeks to make sure that it's going to be an encouraging, fun and exciting evening out for you. So grab your sister, your friend, your colleague, your aunt and come and enjoy the evening with us. 7 in the main auditorium. See you there. Thank you for watching Church News. Family news and additional details can be accessed on all our social media platforms. So please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and please download our brand new app. If you follow us and click notifications on our YouTube channel, you'll get a reminder notification whenever Church goes live. Dream Team, please receive the giving now. Enjoy the rest of the service. Online Church family, we are so grateful that you've joined us for church today. We consider you a big part of our community as anyone else, and we hope that you enjoy the Sunday experience with us today. If you'd like to get a hold of us, let us know how you're doing, or if you would like us to help in some way, please complete one of our online Hello cards and let us know how we can serve you. Our giving is happening right now, live as we speak at our North End branch in Port Elizabeth. We consider it a privilege to partner with God and His people in furthering His kingdom purposes here on earth. If you consider yourself as part of our church family, we'd love for you to partner with us and so into God's plan for our church. Please click on the link below and you'll have all the details you need to contribute to our story. We believe we can do more together than anything we can do alone. So thank you for joining us in telling the salvation story. Enjoy the rest of today with us as we get into the word.
church I just want to say something that we know that God says that he'll move mountains and we're singing it in the song but actually scripture says that we will be moving the mountains you and me are the mountain movers it says if you have just a little bit of faith you can say to this mountain be moved into the sea or to these trees be thrown up into the sea be cast out into the sea so you have the authority in Jesus name I'm not standing back waiting for Jesus to do something strange that He has put in my hands. He has called me to declare His name in faith over my situations. And He has made me a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through Him who loved me. It's because of His love for me that I can conquer. Amen. Oh, now I'm seeing you move. You move the mountains. Let us speak in faith. Lord, we thank you for meaningful faith, for mountain-moving faith. We thank you for holy moments and opportunities to hear your word and worship you in spirit and in truth. Today we pray that for each one of us and our families and our world, that you will move mountains and that you will establish your kingdom in all that we do. And everybody said, Amen. Would you give God a shout of praise and worship, celebrate. I thank our team for leading us in worship. That song too is a Vincent uh, original. Uh, wrote, wrote it recently. And you can get it on um, any of our on, any online platforms, right Vince? Uh, so uh, we, we cheer you on. Won't you uh, thank Vince for... Um, uh, uh, one, one, one or two more things. I know that Beyond Adventure is here somewhere. Um, I, I think it's that. Well, welcome to, to church this morning at Father's House. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, they're the enthusiastic, crazy uh, adventure God people who um, operate uh, from uh, somewhere in the Eastern Cape. I'm never... Okay, I didn't hear that really clearly. Please forgive me. I want to say it's um, Alice or something, and I'm, I'm not quite sure. Alice Dale. Is that right? Oh, good. Thank you so much. I got that one right. And then also to welcome everyone watching via live stream from around the world. Would you please watch? Watch. Welcome. Would you please welcome our online church watching right now? Um. This is uh, the fourth week, a month of running two morning services, and we just absolutely love having more church and spending more time with you. So you should give yourselves a round of applause for one month in of three services at North End. Go ahead. 
and celebrate that. I remind you that we have a service uh, tonight and one in Utenag tonight at 6 o'clock, and that starting the 17th of March in two weeks' time, we will have a service in the morning in Jeffreys Bay also. So we're really excited. Yeah, Jeffreys Bay over there in the house. We're really excited about that. On March the 17th, keep your eyes and ears open. We're going to do that Sunday a little different. We're calling it a Super Sunday. And we'll have probably two or three in a year. And um, the goal is, I'm hoping, to be able to preach here at 8.30, then drive on out to Jeffreys Bay, do the launch service at 10.30 just that Sunday. Thereafter, it'll probably be at 8.30. But just to be there the, for the launch service, stay for brunch, then get in the car and go to Utenag and preach in the evening service at Utenag and then stay for dessert afterwards, and wherever I'm not, it'll either be broadcast or we'll fly in a guest preacher. It all depends on the technology availability, because some towns don't have the same Wi-Fi um, level, right? So it's all got to do with that. So can we be excited for 17th of March? Look forward to doing something a little different? I certainly am. We've been in a conversation over the last couple of weeks um, uh, centered around relationships. Some of that creates great tension because some people don't want to talk about their relationships. They just pause for effect. Eh? Uh, and some people are unhappy about their relationships. And then other people want us to carry on talking about it as long as possible because they're sitting next to the person they wanted to sit next to. And they... Uh, drove with the person they wanted to drive with to church, and life is good, and so they uh, keep talking is the theory. Well, uh, are there some amens for that? A couple of people are happy to be seated, okay? And so, <laughs> someone's probably happy they're seated next to no one right now. That is a... Uh, <laughs> well... The conversation around relationships has also been a realization from Scripture that relationships are not only uh, around marriage, that there are many kinds of relationship in Scripture, and that the Bible gives us good guidance on all of them. We have a relationship with ourselves, in a sense, those who, who are to love others the way that we love ourselves. There's a relationship there. There's a relationship with our Heavenly Father that we are not servants, but sons and daughters. So that's a relationship nature that's really important. We have a relationship we discovered last week a bit with money, uh, because the Bible says it's not money that's the root of all evil, but the love of money. And love is a relationship feeling, isn't it? It's Some people have a an, a, an unhealthy relationship with their money. Some people's relationship with their money is currently that they've broken up and, um, and are not talking to each other at the moment. And some people have a very um, healthy relationship with finances. Then there's relationship with children, parents, one another in a local church. It's all tied in together. And I guess one of the valuable lessons of our journey has been that if we're going to be good in one kind of relationship, we need to learn how to be godly in all of them. Can you say amen? You don't just get to be good in one relationship and then have everything else broken. And God teaches us instead how to build a relationship network that is healthy. Amen? Because let me tell you, you could be married to the right person, but your relationship with money can mess that up. Or you could be married to the right person, but your relationship with your mom. You're very awkward, quiet. I'm just telling you, different kinds of relationships, you're not independent, you're connected. You could even be married to the right person, but the way each of you handles your relationship with God can mess it up. Let me give you an example of that. You love each other, stare into each other's beautiful eyes, the crystal blue pools or the dark cave of beauty, I don't know what it is, but you can stare into each other's eyes, but then when it comes to church, there's a big problem. The one's too religious, the one's not religious enough, right? The one just wants to go to church, the other wants to bring church home. 
You know what I mean. <laughs> Honey, we went to church already. I just want to anoint the kitchen cupboards. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I anoint the kitchen cupboards right now. Every meal that comes out of this cupboard is going to be a gift. And the husband's cringing or the wife is cringing. Hey, darling, what are you doing? I'm just laying hands on this car. I'm just believing tomorrow morning when I wake up, this beetle is going to be a Porsche. I'm just receiving it in Jesus' name. And your spouse is rolling their eyes. Isn't it amazing that people get together because they're different? But they get divorced because of those differences. So we're going to figure out what the relationships are and how they should work. So today, I want to summarize and perhaps conclude this series on the conversation that God has a goal for us. And that goal is a sweet spot, a perfect place to be, that when we are in it, everything else seems to connect perfectly. And that that goal is not happiness, but a higher standard, a standard of personal and relational holiness. Happiness and holiness are two different things. Holiness in the Bible is described many times, but often Christians represent holiness poorly. What we mean by that, I mean by that is that sometimes Christians behave like holiness is to act superior or judgmental towards someone else. But holiness is not that at all. Keep your holiness to yourself. You don't know me. Pause just... Breathe. Holiness is not about measuring your behavior against someone else because we always seem to judge people in the areas where we do well. Right? Holiness isn't that at all. Holiness is attaining to a certain point in your life where God is in something. It's getting something to a place where you say, this is God's way. Holiness and happiness are different because happiness isn't consistent. You can be holy in your heart and unhappy with lots of stuff. Can you say amen to that? I've made peace with the fact that I'm in my 40s. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Only a few of you laughing because some of you are, it's that train is coming. Eh? <laughs> the train is coming. I don't have to be happy about it. When I get on the treadmill, I come to the end of my little run. I could be happy, I could be unhappy. The warthog running on the treadmill has a certain level of happiness, but holiness is not dependent on performance and dependent on status. I am happy before God, not because of environment, but because I'm a child of God. And that's not flexible. That's not something that I'm in danger of losing. So I want to encourage you concerning knowing the difference between being happy and being holy. It's not something you measure as an elitist attitude. It's a place to be with God, to be in a holy place in your life. Happiness levels change, but holiness levels keep growing. You know, I don't always do things that make me happy, but I'm happy to do them if they make me holy. Amen? You know, sometimes you have to apologize to someone, and that's not easy to do, but it might be the holy thing to do. And by doing it, it brings you into a place where your life is where it should be. Happiness is temporary. It absolutely does not continue all the time. You might even be happy with something on one day and unhappy with it on another. But your place of peace and holiness is eternal. I love to have some things in my life that are not dependent on how the spring box do. Just looking down. They're not dependent on how a cricket side does. They're not dependent on the quality of the meal my husband cooked for me. See what I did there? Switch some roles around just to remind. My certain things in my life should be happy even if, should be in a good place even if some conditions are not met. If you don't have that in your life, then you're always waiting for someone to meet a certain condition in your life. That's not what God wants for us. God wants our happiness to be unconditional from those things. And thirdly, before I get stuck into our scriptures on this, is that happiness can be annoying to other people. 
but holiness is inspiring. Let me tell you what I mean. I watched reruns of Friends the other day. I know, but I mean, it's still quite a thing, eh? Has anyone, honestly, has anyone watched the rerun of Friends at all? Stick your hand up if you own DSTV. There you go. There's one part of Friends, the TV show, when Rachel, I think, is talking on the phone to someone and they did this. You know this. They did the, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, no, you hang up first. No, I, I'll, I'll wait for you. I love you. I love you more. I love you the bestest. And eventually, I think Chandler just snatched the phone and hung up. And there was shock. Why would you do that? And he said, it looked like you were battling to end that call. You know, that kind of happiness can frustrate other people. It can be a bit too much. If you notice someone in a new relationship, sometimes they can be a bit too much. Sometimes the Facebook status updates have hearts on everything, have glitter on everything. Okay, close to home, eh? Close to home. <laughs> Everything's shiny and wonderful, and it's just like, ah, enough already. You know, with my bay here and my boo there and my <laughs> bestest there. But let me tell you something about holiness. Holiness is never annoying, it's inspiring. People who live a holy life make other people go, I want to live like that. I want a marriage like that. I want to run my life like that. There's something transferable about a holy life that is not transferable on levels of happiness. Holiness produces something more eternal. So I want to encourage you today as we take some practical steps on this to be determined in your heart that I'm not aiming for happiness in relationships. I'm aiming for holiness. Can you say amen to that? With that in mind, let me take you to a scripture in Hebrews. Production's helping me a bit because I've taken up a little bit of time. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 3, and it's quite a, it's quite a uh, scripture. Do you know what that means? It's sharp. It's a sharp scripture. But I think it's well worth reading. I'm going to take a seat here because um, I find I'm less threatening um, <laughs> and annoying. Hebrews 13, 3 says, continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure or holy, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Amen. Before we study that scripture, can I just say, Mike Collier did a fantastic job in sharing his heart on giving this morning. I think that was absolutely... Absolutely fantastic. So here is what the scripture says. It says you can build your life up on holiness in three categories or three levels. First of all, it says do something for somebody else. Help somebody in need because that turns us into more and more of a holiness conscious person. You know, holiness is not about being better than someone. Holiness is about being willing to help anyone. This power of the scripture is incredible. It says, if someone's in prison, don't judge them, help them. If someone's having a tough time, don't be critical, be supportive. How do you build a holy life? Step out of yourself a little and help somebody else. And watch how God improves every area of your life. If you build a life that is an enclosed bubble that nobody can get into, your world will get smaller and smaller. You'll become more and more critical towards one another. You need to open the doors, open the windows, help somebody else and realize my life is good. Thank God. Can you say amen to that? If you don't do that, you get a small life and that small life soon becomes a source of great criticism. The first thing I want to encourage you on if you're working towards or building a holy life is think of others above yourself. Think of others above yourself. We, we live in a country where there are a lot of contrasts, right? And sometimes we have to think of others above ourselves. I got shouted at by someone hooting at me and uh, sticking their hand out the window and saying I'm number one. 
That's how I interpreted it, okay? What had happened? <laughs> okay. May I have a little bit of water? I'm going to tell a story. I, uh, I was stopped at, a, at an intersection, and I have the right to go. I should have gone. I didn't. I didn't go because somebody wanted to walk across. And it was the other day when we had a bit of rain. And I decided, I'm in the car. They're walking. Let them walk. Oh, did I get shouted at for that? And I'm thinking, you rude humans behind me, in your leather-seated, air-conditioned car with your music at the temperature and volume you want, uh, annoyed that somebody who has to walk in the rain up Mount Road has been given right of way. And maybe in our hearts we just have to realize, oh man, there's someone else walking further than I have to walk today. There's someone else carrying more than I have to carry today. And when you do that, you become eligible for being holy in your relationships. Why is that important? Because when you marry, you've got to learn to say no to self and yes to the relationship. Amen? What happens if you marry somebody who has a taste preference in something? That's just Maybe you can't stand fish. I mean, no offense to the fishermen among us, Lloyd. Maybe you can't stand fish. Maybe you think when fish is cooked, it's like a the fumigation of the house. Maybe I'm just expressing my own feelings here. I don't know. I do. I like fish just prepared elsewhere. I, I just feel it must be deep fried beer battered in another place. And then it must come to me. Can we have an amen? And for, for those of you who are worried about the, the beer reference, um, uh, d- d- I found this great verse in the Bible. Man, it set me free. Sean over there, he found it while I was preaching about this in the first service, which makes me wonder, what are people doing while I'm preaching? <laughs> Get off your phones. But there's a, there's, a, there's a great verse in the Bible that says, don't only drink water. No, no, it says that. It says that. It says that. Don't only drink water, but have a little bit of wine for your stomach's sake. How many of you are like, why don't they preach that verse? I come to church here, yeah, they're talking holiness. Isn't God good though? He says a little bit. He doesn't say milliliters. He wants each of you to work out what is a little bit. <laughs> now some people are going to write emails to me, I'm sure. Um, but it is there. It's in, in 1 Timothy. Sean, just, just remind us it's in 1 Timothy, Timothy somewhere. Okay. He is going to print it, and he's going to put it at the, at the door of his home. It's not going to say, bless my home anymore. It's going to say, have a little bit of wine for your stomach's sake. Now, can I tell you that when your little bit of wine equals a bad stomach, then you've gone too far, ne? Must come back to the holiness must come back to the holiness line. But here's the principle that's so vital. Saying no to self, being inconvenienced makes you a great marriage partner. In all relationships, we have to learn to say no to self. That's why in this passage of scripture in Hebrews, he puts the three together. The second thing he says is the marriage bed must be honorable. So here's my advice. I'm going to sit for this one because it's going to be, are you okay if we just go practical for a few minutes? Just like, just honest, practical. Just by the way, uh, if you're looking for a great partner, um, then you should consider joining the dream team uh, of volunteers in the church. Honestly, they are wonderful human beings. There are some great potentials there. I'm 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 just, I mean, look at Mark. I mean... Qualified CA, good-looking kid, uh, rugby referee. Actually, just take that off the list. Because you're going to be in a fight in your relationship. He's going to blow the whistle, give you a red card. It's going to end badly. Here's how you keep the marriage bed honorable. Date somebody with a position, the view, that they're the kind of person you would marry. And if during your dating you realize they're not the kind of person you would marry, end the relationship straight away. 
Don't occupy time in a relationship you don't see a future for. Okay, some people breaking up right now. Can you just, can you just wait until, okay, can you just wait until, someone just moved from one seat to another. It's like, yeah, climb it, yo. Can we just wait till after the service, uh, comrades? <laughs> Before we do that, someone's sitting alone now, but that's not how the service started. I, I, I'll tell you why that's important. Don't invest in something that doesn't have a future. If you're in, some people would rather be in a, re, a bad relationship than be lonely. And that's a bad idea. Let me tell you why. Because the next person who dates you now has to date you with that baggage. And while you're in a relationship with the wrong person, you've, uh, you've blocked the door to the right person who could be right in your life. Oh. Now, if you're married, <coughs> stay where you are. We've got a marriage course for you. I don't want you looking at your spouse right now going, you're a blockage <laughs> in my life. No. I'm going to take you to scriptures on all of this. Just, just give me some time. I'm going to take you to scripture on all of this. I want you to know, l- let me tell you why this is very important. In every area of your life, marry someone who doesn't waste time in something that has no future. And that's why it's really important. The marriage bed must be kept honorable. It means the status of that thing is so important. That relationship is so important. I won't waste time with the wrong person. I won't invest in something that has no future. And I won't do damage to myself so that I am damaged goods to the person I really love. You know, you want to give your partner something beautiful. You want to give your partner something? I'll go deep for a moment on this. You want to give your partner something beautiful. The ring is very important. House is very important. Car is very important. The most beautiful thing you can give your partner is that you are whole. You can buy another ring. I mean, you shouldn't have to. But you, you, you need all that other stuff. The most beautiful thing you can give your partner is to say, I come whole in Jesus. No hurt, no baggage, no injury, nothing. Now, let me just tell you, if you have that, welcome home. You're welcome here anytime, anytime. And God can build you into a relationship that is beautiful. But the road you will have traveled, you know, will have been a bit harder. Not not my fault, you just know it was harder. It's okay, I'm glad you made it. Whatever dirt roads you traveled and uphill climbs and obstacle courses, welcome home. And I don't care what the critics say. They must stay in their small bubble. Can you say amen to that? We honor that. But the most beautiful thing you can do is to give yourself over as a whole person in your heart. And then the third thing, I'm going to take you to the scriptures on all of this, that this verse encourages us on in order to remain healthy in our relationships is to tell us not to fall in love with money. It's weird that those things should be tied together. Can I sit for one more time? Can you handle one more thing? Are you okay? Are we good? Guests? You guys doing good there? I mean, at least, at least if you're a guest, you know no matter what this guy says, you get a free cup of coffee afterwards. And I, I, I want to say this. This is really important. Um, and it's, it's a tough thing to say, but I, I, I want to say it. A person's relationship to resources like money matters when it comes to relationships. Let me just tell you, as a, as a pastor who's counseled and helped a lot of people, that one issue, finances and how you handle it, probably accounts for 80% of breakdowns in relationships. It's not affairs. It's not affairs. It's mostly finances. You've got kids or spouses saying the other is controlling. You've got parents with resources saying my kids just see me as an ATM. It's, it's finances. Now you might think, well, how do I solve that problem? Well, you know, you might not think it's a, you see, there's a kid who amens every time I get to this part of the service. Even in the first service, some child went, yeah, 
least that's how I'm interpreting it. Listen, this might not sound important to you, but it's, can I, can I give the right hook? People who don't have it, don't worry about it. But once you get a bit of money, it matters. You want to know, is my friend really my friend? Or are they walking around with a business plan in their pocket? Now I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. You're going to wonder, what's, what's the deal here? You're going to wonder, is the person who wants to marry my son pure? Or is it because they know they're getting a mansion in Asna and... Uh... No, I'm telling you, that stuff comes up. So why did God put all that together? Here's what I want to advise you on. If you want to be holy, not just happy, holy, you've got to be a giver or tither. I know this makes everybody very anxious. Oh, every, I can feel it in the room like the oxygen just left. <laughs> Some of you are like you're holding your keys already. He must say one more thing. Thank God. <laughs> and I'm throwing these keys at him. <laughs> Now, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me explain to you. This is very important because it is also a place where I say no to self and yes to God. And it's a good place to test the maturity of somebody's relationship. I, I joke about this and I joked about Vince in the first service because he's just so funny on this. Vince is the most generous human being you will ever meet except with food. And actually, not even food with other people. Just food in his own family for some reason. I'll, I'll be nice, I'll be nice. When Vince orders a meal, he tells us all, and his wife, order what you want. <laughs> but when it gets to the table, what's mine is mine. How many of you are like that at restaurants? Just as a matter of interest. Okay. Oh, two or three. Some of you put your hand up so far, you need a caro. Like, <laughs> Well, uh, the, the, I have friends like this, and, and they also like to keep the best part of the meal at the end. So when you think they've finished, they've saved the best, and you stretch over to take what you think is left over and they think is the best over. Come on. And the eyes of correction. You can actually tell how some people are around certain things, including money. Why is this topic so incredibly important? It's practical. It's not just philosophical. You can start somewhere practically, and you can become a holy person in the way you live your life. So here's what I want to suggest. First and foremost, don't be selfish. Help other people. Secondly, don't be in relationships that have no long-term future. Thirdly, be a giver. How? To the house of God, not to the NSRI or anybody else. I like them, but that's not the principle. Can we just have an amen? You don't, you're not giving to your kids. That's responsibility, not reward. Right? Give consistently. Start reasonably. In other words, don't give like you decide on buying a McDonald's burger. Is there change in my car? It's not giving. That's tipping. Are you going to come back? I don't know. Today could be the day. The day he ruined it all. Be, no, let, let me tell you why. Because I've seen with people, if they're generous givers and they take it back when they're not happy, they're the same kind of person who is going to give you affection and then withhold it when they're not happy. It's the same principle. So you can train yourself in consistently saying no to self, yes to God through generous giving. Where should you start? I didn't start at the top of the scale. I started where I felt I could take a step of faith. Most people in South Africa start earning 5,000 rand a month or more. Start there. Get 500 rand, set it aside and say, this is my commitment, covenant commitment before God. I am going to be a giver. Now, I said this in the first service because, I don't know, there's lots of confusion on this. The offering basket doesn't go to my house after the service. <laughs> it goes to the bank. 
And there, there's a lot of people waiting for it. You know, creditors and commitments, auditors and <laughs> Mike's people. It's a CA. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with my... I'm a tither myself. I know it's tithe also. And you know what? 20 years, 25 years of doing it right, and I didn't always do it right, now people getting jealous of my life. And I'm not embarrassed one bit. I'm very sorry. You can't enter the last chapter of my life and pretend you know the story. No, 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 no. It's not the last chapter. I'm in the middle. <laughs> don't come in on this chapter and act like you know what the sacrifices were. I've been saying no to stuff and yes to God since I was 14. And I don't regret it one bit. I, could, I can't use the names that I did in the morning service because many of them aren't here. One or two are here. But there was a gentleman sitting over there. His name's Andrew Peterson. He married um, Ryan's sister, Nikki. He's the estate agent who got me a house exactly in a price range I could afford. It was 1.1 million. I paid 1.1 million for that black house that you guys criticize so much. 1.1 million. 2,000 square meter property, 400 square meter house, but lots of stairs, so not suitable to a family. I said, built for me. I can still walk stairs. Give me that house. Move that bus. <laughs> that day I went in there, another gentleman, he's, he's not here in this service, he gave me, me 200,000 rand cash. He said, go buy furniture, get in your house. I said, is this taxed? He said, yes, don't worry about that. I pay my tax. I, I asked that because I don't want to be arrested. You see what's going on in the papers, ne? So, <laughs> with the Duermanis these days. I mean, uh, too far. Too far. I take that back. I apologize. That's what happened there. Uh, a Blythe Edissa over there, her family owns East Cape Motors. Please don't ask to be blessed. <laughs> They gave me a car for two years, just free of charge, a mess. They just drive the car for two years, and then after that, they organized another car, and then, you know, and one blessing after another. The, the, this lady over here and her son, Reese, at the back, they're the owners of Bokeh's and Tires, you know. Every time I change my tires, they'll give me a couple of months or a year or three to pay it, you know. Please don't go to them and say, I'd like to be blessed also, <laughs> even me, four by four, you know. What am I saying? I'm, I'm so grateful to be blessed way beyond my salary. I don't know how God does it, but he keeps doing it. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. And you know, it upsets people. It annoys people. I've had to think about it long and hard. I'll try not to be unreasonable and create problems. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that guy posting my latest whatever leather jacket or whatever. I'm not going to do that. But I'm also not going to bow low so that somebody else can feel tall. That's dangerous, that thing. How low is low? I mean, how low? No, no, no. You just do what God calls you to do. And you don't always happy. I'm going to tell you now, some people aren't going to be happy about this, but don't worry, I'm not aiming for happiness this morning. I'm aiming for? Well done, holiness. You might not be happy with this thing of, can't I just have any relationship I want, and as long as I'm getting something out of it, I don't have to worry about marriage. No, no. Say no to self, yes to God, have a holy marriage. Why should I worry about someone else? Why should I get involved in kids' church, worry about other people's kids? I can hardly look after my own. That was a joke. <laughs> Didn't work. I won't use it again. Why, why, why should I worry about that? Why? Because you're saying no to self. Yes to God. And you do that consistently and you live a holy life. And you know what I love about that? Whether I'm happy about something or unhappy about something, I sleep well at night. I wake up energetic in the morning and I'm excited for the future. Can you say amen to that? You can build a life that is God-centered without being elitist and judgmental that is full of holiness and full of righteousness. And if you do that, the blessings will keep coming. One last comment. I'm minus 13 seconds right now. One last comment about wine. If you don't know, after 
200 years of not having had any alcohol at all in my life, I, I started adding a little bit of amarula in my coffee at night. Just so you know. <laughs> it's the beginning of the end. If this goes on, I'm going to be married in a year. <laughs> Stop it. Wow, that's rude. And, um, oh, but the Bible says this. The Bible says you can't put, put new wine in old wineskins because the wineskins will spoil and you will lose both. But the last verse in that scripture is the power verse. You guys can search for it again after the service. The last verse says this, but the old wine is better. Now, you know why old wine is better in scripture? Because it took a patient process to produce. Don't run your life on the same principles as cheap wine. Don't, thank you. No, no, that's an amen. Don't let the ameners leave. That's an amen right there. That's, that's Jesus talking through the mouth of babes. What's, what's cheap wine and good wine? Cheap wines in a box was made last year and you can hardly get through it. Good wine came through a process. It's got a vintage to it. It's been going for years. And when you pour it, you know the stuff's good. It doesn't look like grape juice on a bad day. Okay, in bad advice, but good principle. Don't make cheap life choices if you want quality results. That's why the verse says, the old is better. Could you please stand with me as we pray? Thank you so much for enduring and enjoying and celebrating and commenting on the Relationship Series update. Thank you so much for journeying with us into two services. We've grown so much in attendance, and we look forward to growing in other areas also. I, um, I know some people are heading out to get the coffee ready and the in ticket counter ready and all those things. We, we have a wonderful large church but I worry about one or two things. Let me tell you what I worry about. I worry that we won't learn the value of hard work spiritually, of doing it and doing it every day until the result is there. And I worry that we'll think that it doesn't matter what we do, someone else can fix it. And I want you to know it's true, but it shouldn't be like that. Build in a way that doesn't need fixing later. Can you say amen? Father, I pray that you will today put your word in our hearts with great power. Thank you for the grace in this house for wins and fails. Thank you, Lord, that our community as represented best the way we read scripture is a safe place for everyone whether married or divorced, remarried or complicated, this can be home. Thank you that when we come home, our Heavenly Father inspires us through Scripture to live not for happiness, but for holiness. And that there is a beauty to holiness that other people admire. It's inspirational. It's transferable. Help us live that way so that we don't live selfish lives. We live spiritual lives in Jesus' name. And everyone said, would you give God one more thank you, shout of praise. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed the service. If you'd like any information or any help, please fill out one of our online Hello Cards and join us next week again.